This is Math 141, Section 4.1. We're going to talk about exponential functions. So exponential functions are functions that change basically by multiplication. As x increases by 1, the output, in this case, doubles or multiplies by something. Um, if I had, you know, if I wanted f of 3 here, I'm saying 2 to the third power, that's 8. You could think of it as 2 times 2 times 2. Or if I said f of 7 to the seventh, on my calculator I can use that caret button right here, right above division, to do an exponent. 2 to the seventh power is 128. And so on. How about um, I could have things like f to the 1.5. Now this idea of like multiplying it by itself one and a half times, it's a little strange. So it's time to start to kind of let go of that idea that it's just repeated multiplication. About 2.8284, blah, 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 so on and so forth. So instead of equal to, I would say about 2.8 and then going on and on and on. How about f of zero? That's 2 to the 0th power. Now, um, without knowing, a lot of people would say that that should be 0. But it actually is not. It is, it is actually a 1. And so with exponential, anything to the 0th power is equal to 1, except 0. Um, that's undefined. A, 0 to the 0th power is undefined. Uh, how about if I had... Uh, I'm sorry, different function, g of x is equal to 16 to the x. <laughs> what would g of 1 half be? Let's see, 16 to the 1 half power. Well, if you remember your exponent rules, 1 half power is the same as square rooting. So it's a 4. 16 to the 1 fourth power, that would be the same as the fourth root which is actually two, and I can do that on my calculator. I can say 16 to the power of, and then I'll just make sure it's in parentheses, one divided by four, one fourth. Spits out my answer. All right, so we can evaluate these pretty easy, especially if we have a calculator. So let's talk about um, compounding interest. Let's talk about basically uh, loaning and investing money. And this is this and gambling were two pretty nice uh, starts to mathematics. A lot of research uh, done, a lot of a lot of drive to do it uh, fairly early on. So let's talk about simple interest: one thousand dollars at fifteen uh, per percent per year. So if I have a thousand dollars and I get fifteen percent per year, it's going to sit there for a year and do nothing except make money. And if you get an investment at fifteen percent a year. Um, Man, throw a bunch of money at that. That's a great, great rate. So let me grab my calculator. Uh, one of the things that we can do is we can just take 15% of it. And, and that's just multiplying by 15. So 1,000, uh, not plus, but times 0.15. $150. So in that year, that 15% that interest got $150. And now if I think about the total worth of it, the total worth is the $1,000 since it's still there and the 150. So it would be $1,150 after one year. Now notice I got from here to here by multiplying by 0.15 and then I added it back on. So I could have gone straight from here to here by multiplying by 1.15. Basically this is 115% of that. So instead of doing it in two steps, multiply by 0.15 and then add it back on, I'm just going to multiply by 1.15. So that's the first year. So the second year, if I want to know how much it's worth, uh, I would multiply by that 1.15 again, because I'm getting 15% on the $1,000 and on the $150 that, that came into it. So I'll go times 1.15. Whoops. Um, let me get the right amount in here. Now I'll go times 1.15. And now notice I just didn't make an extra $150. I got it, but I got $22.50 more because of that 
because uh, I got interest on the interest. So that's uh, thirteen twenty-two fifty. And the third year, I would do the same. And the fourth year, I would do the same. So notice to get to the fifth year, I will have multiplied by 1.15. One, two, three, whoops, from zero. So one, two, three, four, five. So basically, I have $1,000 that I started at, and I multiply by 1.15 five times. So I could write that out five times, 1.1, or have it just take it to the fifth power. So after five years, this would be worth uh, $2,011 and 30, let's round that up, six cents. Just like that. So I have this, this simple interest, um, and we'll see why this is called simple in just a minute which is basically the principal, the amount that I started with, times one plus the rate, 15%, written as a decimal, to the power of time, how many years it sits there, how many times it's compounded. All right, that is amazing and wonderful, but that is not how uh, interest really works. Because if it was, what would happen is your money would have to sit there for a full year before it before it got anything and then it just raises up in like in like one chunk right it sits at a thousand then a year's up then it goes up by that extra amount then a year's up then it goes up by some more so we have this to the power of of time so if instead of compound instead of compounding this at the end of the year we could compound this um, what's called semi-annually. So we'll compound it, here's the year, halfway through the year, and then again at the end of the year. Now if we do that, you shouldn't get 15% at the halfway mark at each time. Because if we do that, you're basically like, your money's growing faster than it should. So here's what they do. They take the rate and they cut it in half. But then they give it to you two times in the year. So instead of giving 15%, for the whole year, you get 7.5% here, and then you get 7.5%. Now it feels like at the end of the day, that should just balance out, right? So let's let it sit there for 10 years. Let's see what happens. So grab that calculator. We have that 1,000 and uh, one plus 15%. And if it just sits there for 10 years, and we get it once in the 10 years at 15%, it's worth that. But if we go the other way, and by that, I mean, we give us half the rate, but we get it twice as much. So notice we're getting half the rate, but we're getting it twice as much. So this is compounding 20 times, but half the rate is compounding 20 times. And look at that, that's like $200 more just by doing that. So this idea of uh, compound interest gets better than just simple interest. Oh, and we could do it more, right? Let's do it monthly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Whoops. So if we do this monthly, we're getting a twelfth of the rate. 12 times. So our equation would look like this with the, the 12s here, right? Because we get a 12th of the rate, but 12 times a year. The rate is substantially smaller divided by 12, but it is also happens 12 times more, 120 compoundings. Let's take a look at that. There it is right here. I have it entered in with the 12s. Quite a bit more. So notice what happens to this simple compounding, the rate gets divided by the number of compoundings and the time gets multiplied by the number of compoundings. So essentially it becomes this, and so and this is the amount at time t. So now this is our formula for interest that's compounding. So let's, let's take a look at C. Let's say I had uh, $5,000 and it's invested at 3.7% uh, 
pretty decent return these days. Um, and it's going to sit there for, I'll say, 15 years. So I'm going to have my semi-annual. That's two times a year. I'm going to have my quarterly. That's four times a year. And I'm going to have my monthly, which would be 12 times a year. Of the setup is the same. My principal is $5,000. I get that $5,000, 100%. Plus, now this written as a decimal is 0 0.037. So 0 0.037. But I'm only going to get half of that rate. But I'm going to get it two times a year for 15 years. Notice that setup. Uh, this setup almost exactly the same. I have this principal rate. But it happens four times a year, so I get a fourth of the rate, but I get a four times a year for 15 years. And then lastly, I get a twelfth of the rate, but 12 times a year for 15 years. All right, let's see what this does for us on the, uh, on the calculator. All right, we had $5,000. There's our rate. And then that's going to get divided by, in the first case, just by two. And it's taken to the power of, and um, make sure that you put this part in parentheses if you're going to not just multiply it out, if you're going to enter your calculator this way. Because we want to take it to the whole power of 2 times 15, not just the power of 2. All right, so if that amount gets compounded semi-annually, that would be its value after 15 years. Our next thing was quarterly. So the only thing that changed was we only get a fourth of the rate, but we get it more often bit more money. And how about if we do it for, for the 12? So we only get a 12th of the rate. I'm going to insert the two. But we get it 12 times a year for 15 years. Get even a bit more money. So that is that formula for using compound uh, interest for compound growth. And again, the, the rate's always the same in the problem, the time's the same in the problem, but sometimes you'll be asked to do it for different uh, compoundings, number of compoundings. So we've been talking about exponential functions, and, and the base you know, is the part that's taken to the power. So like in this case, the base is 3, or in this case, the, the base is uh, 2.9. Now the natural base is, um, is a, it's a constant. It's a number like pi. You know how, how pi, we use this symbol to be an approximation for 3.14159, blah, blah, blah. And, and that comes from, if you take the circumference of a circle, the distance around the outside, and divide by the diameter of any circle, you get pi. And we use pi as the symbol for it because um, we can't write it as a fraction. It's, it's irrational. This, this ratio, this divided by that, is... is um, a number that goes on forever and ever, never repeats itself. But it's about 3. Now the natural base, uh, the symbol that we use for it is E. And again, E is just a number. And I'm going to look at my calculator. It's actually in two different places on my calculator. And they both involve um, using the second button. So if you look right up above division, there's E. So E, the number, is about that. Now it looks like it starts to repeat itself, 1828, 1828, but it doesn't. After this, it, it this pattern doesn't keep going on. Um, it's also here, just to the left of 4, there's this ln button, which is actually the natural log. e to the x is another button we have on here. So that brings in e, but automatically puts it to a power. And if I put it to the first power, it's just e. So I'm going to say it's about 2.718. So it's called the natural base. And uh, it's called the natural base because it seems to pop up um, in exponential growth problems. It's, it's kind of like, in a sense, you could think of it as almost a, a maximizer, like optimal growth. We can, we can base it on E. And so let me show you one place where we could, we could talk about E. So last time we talked about uh, compounding interest, something that compounds annually, not annually, like semi-annually or quarterly or, or whatever. And um, our formula for that was uh, the principal times 1 plus the rate divided by the number of compoundings 
to the power of the number of compoundings times t. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a thousand dollars. No, I'm not. I'm going to take a million dollars, and uh, I'm going to give us a hundred percent return on it. Not too bad. Um, so, and we'll just let it be there for one year. So, if I, I'll say my number of compoundings and my value. So if I let this compound uh, just for one year and just one compounding, in other words, I get 100% once at the end of the year, uh, that value will double. So that would be worth $2 million. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to increase this number of compoundings and see what happens to this value. So how about if I compound it semi-annually? Well, I'm going to do that on my calculator. So a million is 10 to the sixth. And then I'm going to say 1 plus, my rate is 100%, which is 1. And then I'm going to divide that by my number of compoundings, which is 2. And then I'm going to take that to the power of 2, 2 compoundings in one year. So that would be times 1. So I'm, I'm not going to worry about the times 1 because that doesn't change the value. Notice it gives me uh, this value right here. That's a bit more money. So here I just compounded it once, 100% at the end of the year. Here I compounded it half of that, so 50% halfway through the year, and then 50% again at the end of the year. And notice I got $225,000 more. Nice, so how about let's keep doing this. So I'm gonna compound it quarterly four times a year. So remember what happens with that is the rate gets split into four, so it would be 25%, but it'll happen four times in the year. And I get a, a bit more. So notice that just when I went from one to two, it increased by 225,000. When I went from two to four, that's a bigger jump in my number of compoundings. It went up by about maybe a little less than 220,000. All right, let's do it monthly. So 12 times. So in the year, I will get um, a 12th of the interest, but I'll get it 12 times. So notice my interest is decreasing as my number of compoundings is increasing. So there has, there, I don't know if there has to be, it seems like there might be some sort of uh, balance here or, or some something comes out something should come out in such a way that uh, either this is a decreasing too fast or this is increasing too fast so let's see what happens we'll keep doing this all right 4 to 12 that's a big jump that's a jump of 8 you know more than doubled and then I didn't even get 200,000 out of it this time so notice that my number of compounding is making bigger, bigger jumps, but my total value at the end is decreasing. So as this is increasing, this is decreasing. Um, let's do it. Let's do it daily. Let's do it every day, 365 days. So again, what happens is the year gets split up into 365 pieces. We are going to um, get that fraction of the interest. So we get 100 percent divided by 365, but it happens 365 times. Notice that's a big jump from 12 to 365, and I hate to say only, but we only got $100,000 more out of it. And I only say only because when we just went from 1 to 2, we got $225,000, more than twice this change. That's interesting. So I could just keep doing this, right? I could make this change by the day, basically 365 times 24 and see see what happens. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go 365 times uh, 24, uh, not by the day, sorry, by the hour. So that's how many hours there are. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to store that in X. And I then, when I go back to edit this thing, I'm not going to have to type in the number in a couple different places. I'll just change it to an X. So I'm going to get 
one eight thousand seven hundred sixtieth of the interest, but I'm going to get it eight thousand seven hundred sixty times. Two seven one eight one two six sixty nine. It's slowing down quite a bit, right? Like this is this was almost nine thousand. This value right here, and not even a thousand dollar increase. Well, let's let's just make it compound a bunch of times. Um, let's make it go fast. Let's make it compound a million times. It'll compound a million times in the year. But what that means is we only get one one millionth of the interest. So the amount of interest we're getting is tiny. Oh, I want to store that in X. The amount of interest that we're getting is tiny, but we're getting it a bunch of times. Like we're getting it compounded. We're getting that multiplication a bunch of, bunch of times. That is not very much of an increase. And I'm going to round that up to 47 cents if you're keeping track at home. So just from, remember, this was about 9,000 to a million compoundings. I get maybe 160, 155 more bucks around. So this is definitely slowing down. So if I think of this as a as a graph, as my number of compoundings increases, my value goes up too, but it starts to cap out somewhere. You know what I mean? It's it's an asymptote. It's asymptotic. So the rate at which it's growing slows down, and it is going to approach somewhere, but never get there. And where is that? Well, remember we multiplied this by a million, right? So if I Forget about multiplying this by a million. I just have a decimal point right here. Just have a decimal point right here. And notice what I have is about E. Again, multiply by a million. And see how I got there pretty quick. And if it's not close enough, I would keep going. So here's what, here's what we're doing. We're letting the number of compoundings get faster and faster and faster. Grow, 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 grow. And as we do that, the value increases, but it starts to settle down to a spot. And that spot is E. Notice how if the only thing we change in this situation is the number of compoundings, the fastest we can get it to grow has to do with E. Um, and there's our, there's our E right there. So there's, again, there's... A couple ways, uh, several ways to think about E, but this is this is a nice convenient one that connects to exponential growth. That one of the definitions is the limit as X approaches infinity. So let X get really big of, and notice we're just grabbing this part right here, one plus one over, and instead of X, I'll use N just because I used it here, N to the power of N. So as n gets really big, this fraction gets really small, but this exponent gets really big, this thing settles down to e, gets closer and closer to it as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Now that gives us a powerful tool which we will call continuous compounding. If you remember last time when we were talking about um, just compound interest, the interest stays, the, the value stays the same for a while and then when you compound it, it does a jump like this each time. Right? Like if I compound it quarterly, there's a full year. It's this amount, this first amount for a while, and then compound it at a quarter, and then compound it at a quarter, compound it at a quarter. And then if we, if we cut it up more, the more compoundings we have, we can make it grow a little bit faster over the year, and even up one from there. But what continuous compounding does is that lets us basically have our number compoundings approach infinity. So instead of these little discrete changes, it's always growing. And it's growing at e to the x. So my continuous compounding then is just my principal times e to the power of t. Pert. I want to take a quick look at a graph. Um, here's 2 to the x. Here's 3 to the x. So how about e to the x? Since it's about 2.7, 
It should be right between them, and it is. The other thing I want to point out is it's really easy for us to evaluate um, functions at E on the calculator. Um, and I'm going to use this button for it, this, the natural log one. So for example, if I uh, define a function f of x is e to the x. Um, if I wanted to evaluate f of 5, that's e to the fifth power. So I'm going to e to the fifth power. And so notice this button will bring in the uh, the exponent with it. That's why that button's there. Um, this button is just e. So if you wanted to use it, you did, and then you have to hit the caret button to get there. But either way, I'll get you there. Hey, real quick, what's e to the zero? Anything to the zeroth power is one. And we could go e to negative numbers too, right? And that would be some sort of decay. So expect that to be between zero and one. So $7,000 is invested at 6.9% for 15 years, and we're going to let it compound continuously. So how much will it be worth? Uh, our principal is 7000 It's compounded continuously, so we'll say e to the power of the rate. Remember for the rate, we're going to put it as a decimal. Now the 100% is already in here. We don't have to go 1.069 in this case. It's just the rate. And then we're going to multiply that by the time, which is 15. So $7,000 times e to the power of the rate, 0 0.069 <laughs> times the time. And it'll be worth about $20,000. Not too bad. All right. The practice for this is a lot of problems like this. So remember, when we have continuous compounding, we use this formula. And when we have just uh, compounding that's not continuous, we use this one, rate divided by the number of compoundings, power of the number of compoundings, times the time. So all the variables are the same thing, except the n isn't in, uh, isn't in the continuous compounding one. So give that work a try. Post any questions you have in the forums or message me.